the beginning, there was darkness. And in the August 10th, 2024, there was me beating the level. That was pretty neat, I think. Let's talk about it, since there's lots to talk about. Do I sound tired? That's because I am. It's fucking 8 a.m. and I haven't slept. Please help me, God. For one, Ashes is one of the hardest solos. Of course, Kyaoki, Wide Step, and even Spectro Cyclone are harder than this, but not a lot of solos strive to be harder than, like, Digital Ascent, so it still holds its spot. This also simply has way too many objects, like, 306k is ridiculous. And most importantly, of course, it was verified on my birthday. That's pretty cool, I think. Anyways, the one word I would use to describe Ashes is personal. The unique is also a close second, even if the two are very intertwined. Lots of personal levels like this take big swings, and while some of them don't work, the majority of them do. A bit surprising from a nobody like X Haydax, though I guess they've made bangers such as, well, Bangarang, and also like a trillion bizarre unrated levels, so it checks out. I'll describe this level's aspects in a chronological order this time to make it a bit easier to follow. Sorry, parts 1 through 4, you will be missed. I think, I don't know, whatever. I've divided this into six segments, so let's do this. This part already has like 39k objects. Can you see why this is ridiculous? Anyways, there's not much to talk about with this part since it is also the shortest. It's got some unusual wave gameplay structuring and cool factory deco with a bit of rusting on the structures, as well as some strong gradients. There's also short high CPS bursts with much more empty designs surrounded by waves to fit the song and to also just foreshadow that this ain't your grand best level. A pretty cool stutter effect as you hit the last dash orb marks the end of this part. Alright, shit is getting intense in this part. This is one of two very high CPS parts in the level and I don't think it is very hard to see why. The song really gets going here at its breakneck 2.30 BPM pace, but the incredibly crunchy guitar is large and in charge of the mix. It isn't even the rated extreme demon with the fastest song, since Synergetic Enigma is at 300 BPM but whatever. What is also large and in charge in terms of the gameplay is the learniness. Like, my god. This part though, thankfully gets very consistent, even with the pretty scary looking but not actually all that tough waves. It makes you feel like a boss every time you pass it, like it is satisfying. Unfortunately, the deco is a bit static in this part, with pulses being less impactful than they were in the previous part, which doesn't make a lot of sense since the last part was the intro of the song. It makes up for that though, with some pretty good movements and having the absolute confidence to rock that basic 2.1 moon background. Also apparently there's some saws here for which you can turn the custom rotation off as they can be extremely laggy, though I never experienced significant lag on this level. So maybe people who struggle with it don't have a, what's that one company calling it, a fucking DX racer? I don't know. Not enough RGB lighting on their headphones, is what I'm saying. I'll tell you what is enough RGB lighting though. It's this part, it's like rainbow and stuff. The song calms down and introduces some vocal chops and a bright synth block, while also being very quick to get up and going to the next drop, so to speak. The deco in this part is the laggiest of the entire level, having 55k objects, which is like 1 and 2 thirds of the object count of the last existence, so that should say a lot about it. Honestly, both levels, but you know, I think it was barely worth it, because the slight lag at the cost of the parts looking pretty good is very bearable. This part is definitely the hardest in terms of gameplay because it is mighty inconsistent. This is already shown in the transition into it, where you can both die while hitting the pink orbs in the UFO, or you can overshoot and only hit 3, which will not gain you enough height. The green orb at 21% is probably the biggest choke point in the entire level, and while I found a visual cue for it, it still was not easy. The other worst timing in this level is the slope timing at 25.6%, since it is also just extremely awkward. I didn't find a visual cue for this one, I just clicked based on where I felt it was right. The jump into the coin at 26% is also pretty bad, as well as the blind black orb at 28 and the orbs afterwards that are just as bad because there's an invisible dual portal that can kill you sometimes due to the slumps with the horrible hitboxes sticking out of the ground. There's, there's a lot of inconsistent shitty timings in this part, like it is dire. The next one is much more consistent though. Give this part the award for least obstructive use of a mirror portal. Like the mirror portal here did not throw me off at all. Take notes, uh, no? Does anyone remember that? 53? 
Anyways, this is the second ICPS part in this level, and similarly to the first one, it also makes you feel like a badass while playing it. More so than the first one, even. 55 to 57 is probably the worst part of this gameplay wise, though, as it is a bit unsync compared to everything else. The spiders are a bit sensitive in Janky due to some poor hitboxes, and there are also just miscellaneous bugs that just happen sometimes, like the ball skipping the pink dash rope at 51%. The strips are also there, and they play. Anyways, the energy here is awesome, as a really gritty texture with a glimmer of hope found in the song rating, as it is much more bright and leaning towards B major rather than G sharp minor, compared to 6 to 20%. Speaking of texture, the textures in these rainbow crystal things are awesome. I really love the look of them, even if they did take up 85 objects per single grid tile. The actual structures and their designs themselves are pretty basic. There's such a fucking square you'd think they'd be pushed into a locker and be given a swirly. Let's tackle a part with a different geometric shape being a structuring. Oh, but under all those structures in GD made out of geometrical objects? You're correct, but you suck. I would like you to know that. You're as much of a square as the fucking structures in the previous part. Anyways, the song here is pretty much the same as in 20 to 29, except much more clear because of the lack of filter automation and with a lot more reverb transitioning out of this part. Once again, the deco is more reminiscent of a factory, while also having the glow slam of the previous two parts. Almost like these two cells are working together embracing each other, coalescing. Other synonyms for that. The layering on the foreground structures does make the hitboxes a bit hard to gauge at first, but you get used to it as you play the part. Also about that, the gameplay in this part is pretty unnotable. I guess there's a choke point at 62 and the waves are pretty hard, but not that hard to the point where this part sucks to play. There's also a spike gap at 70 for no reason in particular. If I were to guess, I would assume it's to make you hold on to the final part. Insert transition. Here, uh. As the level draws to a close, we arrive at this peaceful, serene part, which is probably the easiest in terms of gameplay, but it can be the hardest with nerves. There are lots of little doohickeys that you have to remember. It's a bit easier than it looks as you can just hit a lot of red pads that are against blocks of the opposite direction, but it is also a bit harder than it looks since the hitboxes are really strange. Not something you can't just memorize though, so it's fine. What isn't fine though are the swoops at 86 as they are by far the hardest part of this. <coughs> this part is definitely the brightest in the entire level and probably also the best looking in my opinion. The clouds look quite gorgeous with the sheer amounts of glow. Like, I'll excuse the 221 objects on a medium-sized cloud. There's also a cameo from Boxman on this part, and it looks okay. 106 objects is a bit too much for how okay it looks, but this part doesn't lag, so it's fine. Not much to say about the song in this part. It's just like a cut of ambient with subtle changes in texture and melody. In conclusion, Ashes is fucking weird. I love it very dearly for its unkempt, pure ideas and thrilling gameplay. Sometimes you don't need to make the most polished level on earth to make a good level. You can just have a vision and go through with it and use 306k objects and you can get yourself an amazing level. I'd recommend this if you can keep up with its CPS and to end this video, I will read the creator's message imbued into the level itself with chicken scratch handwriting. Ashes is a really important song to me now. This is all what I kind of associate with it now, in the best way possible. The first bit is sort of like the hatred I have for all those people who took advantage of me. But then it changes in the second part, which to me kind of feels like continuously realizing the effects it's had on me and trying to come to terms with it. Also meeting you and you helping me. And the final ambient part is when I finally sort of come to peace with them all. I haven't gotten there yet. But I think I will one day. I want to get over the ashes of my past as well.